Hey everyone, and welcome back to today's news update. Thank you so much for being here. So first off, we are going to be discussing a new bill by Senator Rick Scott of Florida that's actually going to be funding both Social Security and Medicare. In addition to that, the DOJ and FBI are now targeting Catholics apparently as being violent extremists. So we're gonna be talking about that and why they're now receiving that label. And finally, John Fetterman is unfortunately hospitalized once again. His condition doesn't seem like it's getting much better and the New York Times is being ripped for now, I guess, reporting the truth on his actual condition. Now, before I go ahead and get into the first news piece for today, if you would like to go ahead and receive up to 12 free stocks from Weeble in a pinned comment below, I will go ahead and leave the link where you can receive just that. And if you don't want to invest at this time, once you receive the stocks, you can always just sell them for what they're worth. It should be a value of at least $50 or more, and then you can transfer that money right back to your bank account. Okay, so jumping into the first news piece for today, this is from The Hill. Biden has big plans for junk fees, a billionaire's tax, and paid leave. But can he actually enact them? So these are things that he talked about during his State of the Union speech. So what are junk fees? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, under the direction of Biden appointee Rohit Chopra, unveiled a proposed rule last week to cap credit card late fees at $8, which would save American consumers $9 billion annually, according to an agency estimate. It's the latest effort by the federal agencies to take on surprise fees that the administration sees as deceptive and unnecessary. The Department of Transportation has proposed a rule to require airlines to show all extra fees up front, while the Federal Trade Commission is working on its own rule aimed at blocking surprise fees for customers purchasing concert tickets or booking a hotel room. Consumers have expressed frustration over fees charged by powerful companies like Ticketmaster, noting that they don't have a choice if they don't want to pay the fee, and it typically isn't shown up front. Now, first off, who really has the money in today's economy to be going out and buying concert tickets uh, when people are struggling to even put food on the table through groceries, paying their rent, and things like that. I recently saw, I guess, Taylor Swift is back on tour, and people are paying you know, upwards of you know, $4,000 or more for those tickets. It's crazy. Uh, if you go look at Super Bowl tickets, those are going, I, I think the minimum ticket is like $4,000, and you're going to be sitting way high. If you want to get a good seat, it's going to be like $20,000 or more. It's, it's, it's crazy the amount of money people have. But I believe a lot of these tickets are actually going to people working for corporations like employees. These are just like the handouts to the corporations. People that aren't necessarily huge fans of the NFL, just kind of regular everyday people. So, you know, that's also why I uh, avoid Ticketmaster. You know, you go to the uh, Ticketmaster.com, you see a price of like $10. You think it's really cheap. And then, of course, you have like an additional $25. You have like a $10 processing fee, a $5 fee for seating, and just crazy, ridiculous fees. I actually go to a site called TickPick.com. This video is not sponsored by them. It shows you the price up front, and that's what you get. But I think all of us kind of expect these junk fees anyway. So... Probably what they would end up doing in the end, uh, like Ticketmaster and other sites, if they had to remove the junk fees, they would just show the, the price up front with all those fees added in. Okay, so what law might target junk fees? During his address, Biden called on Congress to pass the Junk Fee Prevention Act, which would codify many of the administration's regulatory efforts protecting them from legal action. But Republicans have pushed back on the proposals, arguing that the federal government should not dictate the business model of private companies. So if, uh, if you or I have a private company, should Congress tell us how we should run our business? Let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. Now, as far as the billionaire's tax go, Biden's billionaire's tax proposal first unveiled last year would enact a minimum 20% tax on households with a net worth of $100 million or more. The White House argues that billionaires pay less in taxes than most working families, as most of their wealth is in investments that are taxed at a lower rate. So let me go ahead and explain this bill. So again, it is for people with a net worth of $100 million or more. So that is a very, very few select of Americans that have that much uh, that much wealth. Now, when, when you say that someone like Jeff Bezos or anyone else is a billionaire uh, or, you know, a multimillionaire, most of the time, those people do not have that cash sitting in their bank account. It's like in stocks or other type of investments. So basically, they're wanting to tax these people that have $100 billion or more, a minimum of 20% 
of their gains. Now, let's say, uh, let me just, let me just go over an example real quickly. So let's say that you or I buy a stock, let's say like Apple or Google, for example, and the stock price is $100 when we buy it. Then let's say uh, tomorrow, the stock goes up to $200. So we would have actually, we, that's actually going to be a gain of $100 because we bought it at $100, right? And it goes up to $200. That is a gain of $100. However, until we sell the stock, that $100 isn't actually ours. We don't get to have the $200 pulled back in. So that's what's called an unrealized gain because we had not sold the stock. So the stock the next day could actually go back down below 100. It could go to that say like 50, so we bought the stock at 100, it's now at 50, so we would have lost $50, but since we don't sell the stock, it's not actually realized. So what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to tax these people unrealized gains before they actually sell the stock. So what could happen if they're having to pay 20% taxes on unrealized gains before they actually sell is they, they may actually have to sell some of their stocks off in order to pay these extra taxes. And whenever they sell their stocks, uh, investments or anything like that, that of course could cause the stock market to go down further, which of course, regular people like you or I with an IRA or, or any other type of retirement account, could be like a 401k, that could hurt us as well. So this is kind of a bad idea. Also, if they have unrealized, uh, unrealized losses, let's say they buy the stock at $100 and it goes down to 80, that could, uh, that could also mean that they would actually be getting a t uh, pretty big tax refund because they would have a huge loss. So I'm not sure what they would do about that either. Now, as far as paid leave, that's another thing that Biden is wanting to do. So only 25% of US workers receive paid family leave and 41% get paid medical leave through their employer, according to the Labor Department data. The US is the only developed country that does not mandate paid leave for new parents. Biden has called on Congress to expand paid leave, arguing that it would help alleviate the shortage of workers by enabling millions of more people to go and stay at work. So let me know what you think about that. Should we have paid leave? Uh, for people that are new parents, for both fathers and mothers, let me know what you think about that. Of course, right now we are already in a deficit as a country, so this would cause us to spend even more money. Just not sure if the money is there, so it's probably not going to happen in all reality. Next up, we have Rick Scott. He's now announcing a new Social Security Medicare bill amid Joe Biden feud. So this is straight from his website. So Senator Rick Scott recently came out and said that I have been fighting since day one to protect and preserve programs like Social Security and Medicare for Florida seniors. And today I am proud to announce new legislation that might protect our Seniors Act to safeguard the benefits of these critical entitlements. He said, quote, my bill will do three important things. First, Protect Our Seniors Act will rescind funding for Joe Biden's new 87,000 IRS agents army and redirect those funds to Medicare and Social Security to shore up these programs and address the threats of insolvency. Second, my bill establishes a keep Medicare savings and Medicare requirement. That means that if any bill makes changes to Medicare that results in a savings, every dollar of those savings must remain in Medicare and are prohibited from being used to fund woke projects as Democrats have recently done in their so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Finally, it establishes a rule to prevent cuts to Medicare and Social Security if it is determined that any legislation will cause a cut or reduction in Medicare or Social Security. This rule will force two-thirds of Congress to vote to approve it, making it much more difficult for Congress to make cuts or benefits. So he wants to slash those agents and redirect those funds to Social Security and Medicare, therefore funding both programs. So what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about this bill? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Personally, I think it's, it's, it's great. It's going to strengthen both programs. And also, it's a good messaging point from Rick Scott, who's been hammered by Joe Biden and Democrats in recent months for wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare, even though he's just wanting to sunset all federal programs, which, of course, would include Social Security and Medicare and everything else. And then every five years, Congress would have to vote to renew those programs. So... Again, let me know what you think about this bill. Do you think it's going to pass? I'm not too sure. Also, Rick Scott, while we're on his topic, he sent out a tweet yesterday saying that each year, millions of Americans trust the IRS with their most sensitive information. Yet, the IRS thinks it's a good idea to give Argentina automatic access to IRS financial data. 
I've got serious concerns with the lack of security here, and I'm getting to the bottom of it. So in a letter from Rick Scott, he said, Dear Commissioner O'Donnell, on Monday, December 5th, 2022, the Associated Press reported that the United States Internal Revenue Service is planning to enter a data sharing agreement with Argentina with the express goal of bringing justice against Argentinians, Argentinians who evade taxes by placing cash and other assets in the United States. This arrangement will give Argentina automatic access to IRS financial data on investments, whether that are made through individuals, companies, or trusts. This kind of liberal access into the American people's personal data is alarming, especially given the recent failure by both parties making this agreement. As recently as January of this year, Argentina's interior ministry was hacked, resulting in millions of Argentinians' data being stolen. On top of that, in early September of this year, it was reported that the IRS mistakenly released the confidential data over, of over 120,000 American taxpayers. These types of errors are not acceptable and put hardworking Americans' personal livelihoods at risk. Failures like these safeguard taxpayers' personal information produces a lack of confidence that this automatic data sharing will run smoothly. I am deeply concerned that the American taxpayers' information will be com compromised once again. So what do you think about this? Should we be sharing information with another country here in Argentina? Information that the IRS has, that includes our names, our uh, date of birth, our social security numbers, information that could easily be hacked. I mean, we've, uh, the IRS itself has had data leaked, and now we're going to be trusting the Argentina government with all this information as well. Can we trust that their information will not be leaked? Can we trust that their government will not look into this information themselves and try to use it to their advantage? Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Now, in some other news, this is from the Daily Mail. So John Fetterman, once again, is being hospitalized. He was discharged, though, recently, and there was no evidence of a stroke. He had a stroke whenever he was campaigning, and since his stroke, he really never was the same. It was hard for him to speak in coherent sentences. Very hard for him to lis uh, listen. I, I really don't want anyone to make fun of the guy. It's, it's a very hard time that he's going through. Really, once he had that, he should have dropped out for his own sake, for his family's sake. He should have been using that time to get well, and someone should have replaced him to face off with uh, face off against Dr. Oz. But he decided to stay in the race, and it was uh, especially obvious that he was nowhere near 100%. But he decided to go on anyways. He actually ended up winning. People voted him for, voted for him, so. It is what it is. We'll have to see where things go from here. So sometimes when Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman hears voices that sound like the adults in the animated Peanuts cartoons in which a muted trombone was used to give them indecipherable language. The New York Times reported Friday on Fetterman's struggles to adapt to life in the Senate as he continues to recover from his May stroke. The report comes after, after the Pennsylvania Democrat spent his second night at George Washington University Hospital, checking himself in Wednesday after feeling lightheaded at a Democratic retreat taking place in Washington, D.C. That means he has to use a transcription tablet to engage in conversation, so he's using some type of tablet which writes up kind of like uh, what the person is saying to him, so he's able to read because his hearing isn't all that well. And last week, Time Magazine reported on the accommodations the Senate has so far afforded him, including installing a monitor on Fetterman's desk in the Senate chamber that provides live captioning and arming him with a wireless tablet, tablet for committee hearings. The Times reported that Fetterman's hearing issues are inconsistent and often get worse when he's in a stressful situation. His speech also continues to be halting and jumbled, apparent when... He, when he asked questions at his first hearing as a senator as part of the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry. So, again, he's having a tough time. No one should make fun of him because of this. It's, it's really terrible what he's going through. But again, he should not be in the Senate. He needs to step down and let someone else take his place. Um, he needs to get well for himself, for his family, and also for, you know, all of us, uh, all of us U.S. citizens um, and the, the people that he represent in Pennsylvania, he needs to replace someone who is, is more fit for the position. He's obviously not fit. He needs to go home. He needs to rest. He needs to get well for himself, for us, and his family. 
And of course, the New York Times is now being ripped for only reporting Fetterman's serious mental health issues now that the truth doesn't matter. So the New York Times is coming out and they're actually reporting on this. Now that he's already been elected, he's in office, they were failing to report as well as, well as other media agencies who were saying that Fetterman's fine. He uh, has completely recovered from his stroke when it, it, it was very apparent that he never recovered. And now that he's been elected, they're now reporting on this issue. Now, in some other news from Fox News, the DOJ and FBI are now targeting Catholics as violent extremists under scrutiny by state attorney generals. So Virginia Attorney General Jason Mayeris and 19 GOP state attorney generals are demanding answers from the FBI and Justice Department and threatening legal action after a leaked internal FBI memo revealed that the agency had efforts underway to identify and treat Catholics as potential terrorists. Mayeris and his colleagues in a letter exclusively obtained by Fox News Digital told the FBI and DOJ to desist from investigating and surveilling Americans who have done nothing more than exercise their natural and constitutional right to practice their religion in the manner of their choosing and ask, ask that they reveal to the American public to the extent to which they have en engaged in such activities. Anti-Catholic bigotry appears to be festering in the FBI and the Bureau is treating Catholics as potential terrorists because of their beliefs, the AGs wrote to the FBI Director Christopher Wray and U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland. So what do we think about that? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. And of course, recently, the U.S. shot down another object, this time over Alaska. We did not let it travel over the entire United States. Uh, United States. Thank goodness on that. So Republican lawmakers said Friday that the U.S. military shot down a flying object over Alaska is further evidence President Biden waited too long to order the downing of a Chinese spy balloon that flew across the U.S. mainland last week. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby announced Friday the Department of Defense shot down a high-altitude object flying in territorial waters over Alaska. I can confirm the Department of Defense was tracking a high-altitude object over Alaska airspace in the last 24 hours. Now, several lawmakers shared their takes on the object with the senator in Wyoming, Cynthia Loomis, a Republican, telling Fox News Digital that the Chinese Communist Party has not proven itself trustworthy, and now that a second high-altitude object was shot down over our country, these rogue objects in our airspace are clearly not a mistake. Quote, the U.S. should defend our borders and airspace with whatever force necessary, Luma said. I will, not, I will continue to monitor this situation. And we have Representative Jim Banks coming out and saying that we don't know the details yet. We do know that Joe Biden's failed foreign policy has left Americans much weaker than before he took office. Quote, Biden's refusal to shoot down the, spy, the Chinese spy balloon sent a message to all of our foreign adversaries that America's skies are as wide open as their southern border the India Senate candidate told Fox News Digital. So what do you think about that? Um, again, it, it, it's baffling to me that we let this spy balloon fly over our entire country. What do we think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. But that's all the news that I have for today's video. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.